Since October 2010, Burma has been in a state of civil war, with fighting between the Burmese military and armed ethnic rebels. The ruling junta started a crackdown on these armed groups. The Kachin are one of them. After 16 years of peace in northern Burma, the Kachin now find themselves fighting a war they can never win. <laughs> To enter the area under the control of the Kachin Independence Organization, we must start in China. From the Chinese side of the Sino-Kachin border, there is ample evidence that Beijing is developing this part of the country to open up a gateway to Southeast Asia. Virtually all roads are under construction. The KIO first took up arms against Burma's central government in 1961. Today, they form the second largest ethnic rebel group. It's estimated to have an armed wing of almost 10,000 soldiers. Although the KIO still controls substantial parts of Kachin and neighboring Shan state, most of its territory is forested mountain terrain. The real center of the independent Kachin is their capital, Liza, right on the border with China. In 1994, after three decades of fighting, the Burmese army and the KIO reached a ceasefire agreement. The economic benefits of the ceasefire transformed Liza from a small border village into a thriving trading center that is now home to several thousand people, with many businesses, hospitals, schools, and four churches. And there's even a golf club. Most people here have a better life than those elsewhere in Burma. They can find work easily in booming China, and they profit from the lively business between Burma and its giant neighbor, using KIO-controlled border crossings. This trade benefited everyone, including the Kachin. But this is all about to change dramatically. Late November, under pressure from Burma's generals, the Chinese government put a stop to all border trade with the independent Kachin area, cutting a vital source of income and isolating them from the rest of the world. This move comes after Burma's military regime, led by General Tan Shui, decided to crack down on all armed ethnic groups that refused to come under the central command of the Burmese military. The generals want to end as much ethnic resistance as possible before they hand over power to the so-called civilian government. All of Burma's six armed ethnic groups were left with two options, place their forces under the direct command of the Burmese regime or face war. Like many other ethnic groups, the Kachin refused to hand over their troops. Much to the frustration of the Kachin leadership, this ended all talks with the Burmese army. But the junta doesn't want to negotiate anymore. A military conflict seems imminent. And just outside Liza, the Kachin army prepares for the inevitable. Not only the young Kachin men are ready for fighting, many retired veterans volunteer for new training. And sharing the same conviction, many women have also joined the ranks of the KIA.
Crucial to the Kachin fight for autonomy is the Panlong Agreement. The legendary Burmese independence hero, General Aung San, father of Aung San Suu Kyi, signed this agreement in February 1947. It promised the Kachin and other ethnic minorities a large degree of autonomy. But in July 1947, just months before Burma's independence, Aung San was assassinated. His successor, Unu, never implemented the Panlong Agreement. When we have the rare opportunity to interview the political leader of the Kachin, he begins by showing us a dusty copy of the original Panlong Agreement. The political leader sign here. All together, six Kachin leaders. And Six uh, and eight, uh, and fourteen leaders from Shans, and three leaders from Shins. They all together, on sign all together, twenty-four leaders. They signed down on the Banglong Agreement at that time. Lu me Banglong kasti ko mitrum da te mren mung po mung da nengai me jom te ko ka ngai. Ready mong pang do de de zon re de mong pom krang bru wa an de ke chin re ni ke ga bum nga mi cha ni mong do mi cha ni bum nga mi cha ni lu ra ai lu ang ai mong sa ko kang ching ge ma ko kang mong lu wa re mi jo an de pang tu me de lang 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 na ru mi lan de du ai Majan Pech was so Majan Manai take Kasatna Moo, the Majan Mid Majan Zoo, they clung at their Kuna clung the sea, go on real. And they come back, Mugot Mugana Madu, they drum shot and they rang. Manawa Pech Hong Chitin Damna, they go rang. Next day, we head for the KIO's old headquarters, located high in the mountains. Even higher, and well guarded, is the front line, at about 2,500 meters or 8,200 feet. This is the first line of defense against a possible attack from the Burmese army. <laughs> ได้เพียงพุ่งอังกุลเดียมงานย่าอย่างว่าชุมชีเทมลีชีกรุบยินงานย่าอันเดอันเทอันเทตับเดบุ่มเซนก็ก็ชีสิทธิ์งานกูเ
Renga, and that ya and the Lom Long Matung, and Gun Stat Goloto Mare, and that Pego ya Yama, the Kani Pro, the Yupsi, Miva did not Yupsi, and the Tepe, and the Lom Long, Munta, Busonga. The name is Jet by Takana, the name is Langai, the Kong, the Ku, Lu, Rimagam Shan, Langai, the Kong, the Ku, Mumdanga. The Nampam Sim one, the Nampam Sim one, the Nampam Sim one, the Nampam Sim one, Despite all efforts to become an international, respected, autonomous state, the rest of the world seems to have forgotten about the raging civil war inside Burma. The pastor, who cannot show his face, hopes that somebody will help the Kachin when the Burmese army attack. <laughs> And all Kachin seem to be powerless when it comes to the threat of war. In towns and villages, parents have to come to grips with the fact they have to send their children to war again. While the Kachin watched the release of Aung San Suu Kyi and the subsequent marches through the capital Rangoon on Burmese exiled media, they can only hope something will happen before the imminent attack on them becomes world news. ตายาสักเสียตายาดีนะเวบองปันจะคุมนะพรันจิเกลาราเลยแต่ดีลูกอย่างก็ล้วยมันเด้แม่มุงตานะพี่ว่านะมันเรงาก็สัตว์อยู